Possibility में आप कोई It was Islamic perspective that how the faith community can look into and uh, help the people and associated people uh, dealing with the mental and uh, uh, health related psychological issues in the society we all face every day. So as you can see, the, the list of uh, topics which we'll be covering today on the slide here and the screen and uh, that this is something we all know that uh, stress is a normal psychological and physical reaction to the demand of life this is what the stress is a small amount of stress can be good which is usually motivating and motivational for us to perform well because if we don't take stress at all, that is not good. So we have to take a stress. Some percentage of a stress is important and good for the society. But then, of course, when that percentage exceeds, that becomes harmful for us. But then many daily challenges such as sitting in traffic, meeting deadlines, paying bills can push us beyond our ability to cope the stress which we all face. Dear students, if we look at the scientific manufacturing of human beings, so we see our brain comes hardwired with an alarm system for our protection. <laughs> so God has made us all in a way that our brain has a specific system uh, incorporated in us. And that's hardwired. And it, I would call it an alarm system. And uh, for our protection, basically, when our brain perceives a stress issue, it signals our body to release a burst of hormones that increase our heart rate and raise our blood pressure. This fight or flight mode response fuels us to deal with the issue causing the stress in the society. So basically it's a medical procedure that God has created in every single human being which helps us to deal with the issues and stress we all Alarm system rarely shut off because continuously we keep on facing complications of the life. Something is happening at workplace, something we are facing in our university, something is going on in our family life, something is going on in our personal life. So continuously this modern life keeps on challenging us, demanding something new every single day from us. So which actually keeps us on alarm all the time. And our mental health and brain is always on the verge and ready and on the fighting mode. So it never go relaxed. So if you look at the human body itself, even human body, if that body keeps working all the time, so the tiredness makes it collapse. So similarly, if our brain if we keep our brain busy and all the time set on alarm and uh, busy with so many challenges dealing all the time, so our mental health collapse too. That is very natural. So the way we have to relax and give some rest to our 
body similarly the rest is needed for our mental mental health too so that that's what this whole whole thing starts and happens basically so if we look at the definition of the stress on the screen the stress was originally derived from a latin word and then word stress as we use it now in the abbreviated form this is from distress basically and if we look at the definition from the world health organization stress can be defined as a state of worry or a mental tension caused by a difficult situation stress is stress is a natural human response that prompts us to address challenges and threat in our lives as what we have discussed already everyone experiences stress to some degree the way we respond to the stress however makes a big difference to our overall well being so people they have different sensitivity levels some people they are more trained more stronger in their resistance and power so they can deal with those stresses in more strengthful manner some they are not that uh, strong to deal with the stress of the daily life so usually they face that kind of issue and then uh, that causes various health related issues <laughs> so these are various definitions which you can see on the screen you can take a screenshot photograph of these definitions as well so basically this is what we have discussed now the second part the anxiety we all talk about anxiety anxiety is very much linked with stress so i would say anxiety is a step ahead from the stress when people they uh, they stay in stress for a longer period the second phase they get into or a level they adopt that is anxiety a constant anxiety the people they stay in it and then later on that anxiety causes the depression basically so the depression is the most advanced form which started from regular stress in our life and then that shifted and changed into anxiety and then that that continuous anxiety became the depression so this is a whole big course of line if we don't treat or if we don't manage our stress at initial level so that would become anxiety and later on that would become depression so that makes it more important that we all understand and we deal with this whole phenomena here at the screen i have tried to develop a table which uh, provide you a uh, commonalities and differences between stress and anxiousness and anxiety so what happens when we are stressed so you can read the list and then what happens when we are anxious and we are facing anxiety in our daily life so dear students let's talk about some of the uh, stresses <laughs> what causes the regular stress in our life stresses are something the issues which cause stress in our daily life so let's talk about the stresses first so basically the stresses are of different type and kinds in our life which cause uh, such issues and uh, stresses some some are of physical which are related to the physical environment like a bright light sometime a bright light affect people it causes a headache sometime loud noises discomfort due to excessive heat discomfort due to excessive cold weather traffic if you talk about the social and relational stresses rudeness or aggression in others conflict with others not spending enough time with important people and family members lack of social support system loneliness so these are some kind of uh, stresses which are related to the social uh, life of us and
divorce, death of a child, losing a job, illness, starting university, work, work promotion, birth of a child, marriage with the wrong life partner sometimes, sometimes lifestyle choices, not enough sleep, too much caffeine, too much alcohol and cigarettes, drug consumption, poor time management, poor diet habits, psychological poor health, physical illness, pregnancy, injury. So all these are various types of issues which are usually causing stress in our life. And we all go through it and uh, passing uh, through that. So if we talk about the health conditions which usually emerges out of these stressful conditions which we usually we, we're not aware of and we don't really care much about but later on when we are sick and we are uh, already gone into a specific state and then uh, seeing a doctor and visiting a hospital very often then you cannot do much about it so basically one type is the psychological symptoms then the behavioral symptoms are developed, the people who are stressful or facing anxiety or, or depression, and then sometimes the physical symptoms. Let's talk about the physical symptoms. So there are international surveys which suggest one study that tracked over 68,000 healthy adults for eight years. Those who reported feeling constantly under strain and unable to cope among other symptoms of chronic stress were likelier to die of cardiovascular diseases. So this is the scientific medical reports which suggest. And then another result of another uh, study suggests that 40 to 60 percent increased risk of coronary heart diseases are with those people who constantly stay under a different type of stress and they do not deal with it. And then most of the time when we see a doctor, we see a digestive disorder. Everyone, every second, third person is going through that. So the studies suggest that this is also because of a prolonged stress, anxieties and depressions, accelerated aging. In fact, one landmark study found that these people, and especially in the women, aged on average 10 years faster than the women who did not perceive chronic stress in their lives. So the people, they look more older because of stress only. And this is happening now and often in our lives. And then diseased immune functioning, immune system collapse or because of a, a constant ongoing stress and anxiety in our life. And then uh, it also has an impact on our behavior and impact our relationships. For example, the relationship between uh, life partners, relationship between friends, relationship between children and parents. So all sort of relationships are effect, but we do not really think that we, the, we just look at the relationship and then we put all the blame on the people who are involved in that relationship. We don't look into the situation that maybe we are passing through some stressful times or maybe the other person doesn't really think that this person might be passing through a stress. So instead of dealing and helping that person out to deal with the stress, they just uh, start complaining about their behavior and suddenly they stop meeting and seeing each other. Same thing is happening in family especially the parents in their older age, it is very often out of a very stressful life. They most of the time develop the, the depressions in their life. You go and see them. Sometimes they are yelling, they are shouting, speaking so loud or nagging or always complaining. So sometimes the children, they even stop seeing them and then they leave their houses, leave them on their state instead of dealing with their mental issues, health conditions that they might have faced a lot of stress in their life while they were up bringing us. So we should have or we could look after them in their older age when they are in their depressions. So instead of helping them out in their such conditions, we simply walk out from their lives and try to find their own. So same thing repeats. Maybe the same thing happens when we'll become older 
and this will something our children will do with us as well when we will be in our depressions and they will not uh, like our yelling and shouting and then they will walk out from our lives someday so this continues like that but nobody look at that maybe these behaviors are because of depression anxieties and stress this is something we all need to look into and then impact of job performance maybe something bullying is happening at the university or something is happening so we have to look into the behavioral conditions of uh, the people that why such thing happens so we have already discussed this you can see uh, all the psychological symptoms and the behavioral signs we have gone through already so and then for example all our scientific conclusions that whatever happens out of stress in our life and physical symptoms is high blood pressure chest pain muscle tension and strain and then headache more often migraines muscle tensions asthma so all these things usually we keep on taking a lot of medicines all the time but these all are because of stress anxieties and depressions which we have developed from many other stresses and issues we all face and then sometimes at the work wrong candidate for a right job ambiguous job description inadequate departmental leadership poor communication conflict with colleagues and bosses inability to finish a job and, and so on and on so these are some things so now before i get into the islamic solution so what the islam suggests to deal how to deal with our stress the faith based solution let's talk about what the psychiatrists and psychologists they suggests how to uh, deal with the uh, conditions for example if you go to with all these stress and anxieties if you go to doctor to see a doctor and psychiatrist they would suggest a couple of exercises to deal with your stress levels when you are facing a lot of stress for example the suggested exercises by the psychologists psychiatrists are deep breathing that is something which is helpful in our health conditions eating a healthy diet getting enough sleep getting visualization hobbies and activities and then most importantly meditation this is something all these psychiatrists and psychologists they suggest if you are facing a lot of uh, uh, stressful conditions so meditation always help mindfulness positive thinking progressive muscle relaxation psychotherapy social support system all these friends and relatives they have to come closer to that person who is going through the stressful time and then many exercises as well so these were some now look at what the religious beliefs can help and uh, guide us before i get into it why faith how faith can make difference whatever the faith we believe in and for example i am a muslim so i believe in islam so when i look into the literature of islam i see that it has a lot of potential to help us to get rid of the stress levels and anxiety and depression so i'll get into those references shortly there have been studies recently worldwide which suggest basically that people in stress and depressions actually the religion and faith has a potential to help them so there is a strong a strong established relationship between uh, helping the people in stress and anxieties and religion and faith and how that works when someone is in stress when someone is in serious anxiety going through an anxiety or a depression something they all demand and need the most is hope when someone is in anxiety in depression or anything such so the and something which is needed the most at that time is hope and this is something the faith provides us all this is something with the religion 
provides us all. So let's look into now a couple of references and you will understand. Before I get into that literature, let's uh, I, I initially I said that these uh, the depression is the advanced form of stress and anxiety when someone the anxiety and depression stress ex continues for a very long period of time so that turns into depression and interestingly let's talk about some of the very important figures in united states of america only annual major depressive disorder the growth percentage is 7.6% annually. That is what is happening today because of stress and depressions. And not just that, 0.2% are the serious patient of depressions. And interestingly, 1 million people are dying around the world every year only because of depression. And what depression do? Depression takes away the willingness to live. Depression basically takes away the hope from people. And people start thinking that they are useless peace. Nobody wants them. Nobody needs them. They are no more helpful for anyone. They are not helpful for society. They cannot give help or they cannot assist. They cannot benefit anyone in the society. So suddenly they start developing this kind of thoughts in their mind. So which actually takes away the hope from them. And even they... is spending NVD on the issues related to depressions. So this much expenditure is done only in United States of America. I'm talking about one country. What to talk about the whole world? How much expenditure the health system and the governments have to do only on these diseases which are related to these depressions through medicine and psychotherapy and all that. So if we all think and look into the faith as well. There might be a chance that faith can help help us and give us the hope which is needed in depression, which is needed in stressful conditions. So there are studies which suggest that, that actually it has a potential. Dear uh, students, let's talk about the religion, how the religion and faith can help uh, us come out of the uh, such issues. When we talk about Islam, Islam basically tells us that uh, the ultimate objective, now when we will associate ourselves with any faith, so this will help us develop a better understanding on the issues, which understanding will later on help us get rid of our stresses and depressions. How? Islam, what Islam suggests, Islam basically provides us that this whole life is about the balance. And this education is given to our children right from their beginning. When they are at their own homes, in the labs of their parents. That is from right from the beginning. It is not when someone has developed the depressions, then you start preaching and telling them the balance of life. But it is right, it's a training mode which starts right from the beginning, that it's about the balance of life. You cannot run after something so madly that you forget about the balance. You forget about everything else in your life. And you just focus the job, you just focus the materialistic benefits, you just focus on the materialistic gains in our life. So the balance is something which Islam propagates and suggests and uh, this is a beautiful verse of Quran which says, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina nar. Yet there are others who say, Our Lord grant us the good of this world and the hereafter and protect us from the torment of fire. So basically, this is suggested in Quran 
that do not look into the world only but live a kind of life where you can live a balanced life you can make this world life better as well as you think about your other life which comes after and then there is another beautiful verse of quran which says auz billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa annahu huwa adhaqa wa abqa which means and that he is the one who makes one laugh granting delight and makes one weep granting grief this is the verse of quran a beautiful concept that do not look at the people do not expect much from the people do not see what they are giving to you do not see the stress coming from someone else only have a faith that if we are weeping this is something which has come from our lord only and if we are happy again this happiness has come from our lord what this will do this belief will convert our focus towards our lord we will start looking towards our lord this is what we look at and we will lower our expectations from the people and other human beings and increase all our expectation towards our lord and creator in this world so this is how it helps us develop a better understanding to treat such depressions then there is another verse which says whatever the affliction befall you is because of what your own hands have committed and he pardons much so what god has is suggesting here that uh, usually what happens god forgives whatever uh, we do with our own hands through our body gestures through our actions through our belief maybe dealing with our people we have shouted on someone someone will shout on us some day karma phenomena so this continues like that so god says in quran that i forgive most of these things so again all these hardships and tough times and stresses when they bother you they are only the leftovers most of them have been forgiven only these leftovers are bothering you so then you leave all that up to the god and dedicate yourself and concentrate on the belief that uh, everything comes from the god and again the god can help me with all these uh, issues sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam so whole list of one important uh, the list one important item among the list which help someone to get rid of stress and depression i'll 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 be speaking fast but before that let's talk about a medical concept then you'll be able to understand this whole thing more dear students there is a chemical produced by our hormones in our body which is called endorphin it's a popular set of hormones and chemical produced by our body which is called endorphin so the doctors and medical experts they suggest when someone run consecutively for 3 miles so the body after someone has run for 3 miles body produces endorphin the chemical called endorphin and what exactly endorphin does it contains similar chemicals which are in morphine too usually when you are too much in anxiety and in depressions and mental stress so that if you go to the doctor doctor suggest okay you take this relaxant so morphine or a sleeping pill or anything so the similar chemical which is used to make those sleeping pills and relaxants so the similar chemical naturally is been produced in your body if you do exercise or if you run hard for 3 miles your body will produce that chemical naturally which has a sense of relaxing you 
automatically, naturally in it. So you don't have to take a relaxant. So exercise will help you get rid of that stress and that stressful mental state and depression. But dear audience, there is another interesting thing. Again, the same doctors, they suggest if you go out and help someone do charity or help someone physically, maybe help someone to move their furniture, help someone um, stuck in traffic, help someone, uh, some blind person to cross the road or help someone uh, looking after their children or help some old men to buy their groceries. So any such charitable act, if you do with the purity of heart, doctors are suggesting, so the act of charity and help will produce similar amount of endorphin in your body, which would have produced if you would have run for three miles in exercise. Can you imagine? So what a beautiful concept the God has all created in our body. This is where the faith enters. This is where I want to bring all that discussion to. This is where the faith enters. So science has proven. So when someone runs and endorphin is produced, that is called runner's high. After the running, when the endorphin is produced, that is called runner's high. And when someone, if, if the endorphin is produced out of helping someone, that is called helper's high. So these are the technical terms. When the, and endorphin is like a morphine. So naturally your body produces a morphine and that takes your mind towards relax mode. Whatever the stresses are there, you will get rid of them and gradually. And if you make a habit of helping people on a regular basis, so can you imagine how much endorphin will be regularly produced in your body? So that's how if you Adopt a lifestyle where you keep on helping people all the time. You work for welfare causes. You well work for with the societies, organizations and groups. Maybe a faith group, maybe a charity group or a community group where you are helping people out all the time. That's why sometimes I see people who have made themselves busy with charitable works and welfare works. I always see a peace on their faces. Their faces doesn't look stressful. The people ask, why is that? I don't see, maybe that is not, the people, they all belong to different faiths. Maybe that's, the faith is not the reason. The reason is that medical production of endorphin in the body because constantly that endorphin is being produced in their body, which keeps them calm which keeps them happy and stress-free. So that's where the faith enters. And every single faith, maybe it's a Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, every single faith, 50% of the faith education, it tells you to do charity, help people. There is a beautiful tradition which Christian literature, Bible and Quran and the, the, the in which on the day of judgment, someone will stand in front of God and God would ask that person, I came to you, I was hungry. Why you did not feed me? The so person will reply, God, when did you come to me to ask for the food? Otherwise, I would have fed you. He said, remember that person came to you, he was hungry and you rejected him and you said, no, I cannot help you. So. So that was my image. You did not help me. And that, this is a long tradition. Interestingly, the same tradition is written in Bible and the same tradition comes in the traditions of the Prophet, Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every single religion emphasizes on charity and helping people. And so scientifically proven that helping people in the name of faith maybe, or even if somebody doesn't want to believe in faith, still make yourself busy with helping people and charity and welfare works. Automatically, the stresses and the, uh, the life's uh, uh, 
this will continuously help you and uh, take you out from the uh, stressful life another interesting uh, so another uh, some important there is another beautiful tradition as we are discussing the traditions of the prophet as well there is another beautiful so another another aspect of the depression and stress we all have discussed that is uh, someone people they started feeling low they start feeling that we are not beneficial for the society we are of no use people they they, they don't uh, help us or they don't, they don't want to yeah maybe she she uh, maybe she is a bit feeling little so uh, suffocated maybe if you you want to take her in in a fresh air little bit outside yeah she'll feel better that way yeah so uh, point is that so we were discussing the people they start feeling low because of depressions so there is a beautiful tradition in islam and a story narrated in traditions of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was uh, one prostitute and uh, in the society people used to dislike her people uh, would disrespect her because of her profession they will not sit with her they will not like to be friend with her and she was isolated then isolatedly living somewhere and she were in her depressions and even nobody would expect a, accept a help from her neither from her money or anything so she was left out in the society and facing a lot of depressions so one day she was passing through a well water well there uh, she saw a thirsty dog sitting right next to the well and trying to drink a water from the well but couldn't reach that water so she stopped there and uh, threw her shoes she took off her shoes tied it up with a rope and helped the dog get the water out and fed the dog the god dog survived the tradition the islamic tradition suggests that the lady whatever the sins in her private life she were doing so the god forgave everything and she went to paradise and uh, every sin was forgiven why two things happened one the act of charity made god forgive all the sins the second act she actually herself she felt better she got rid of depression suddenly suddenly the second thing which is very important where the faith helps us is when you do a charity and help people it will give you a better feeling that's why it is said that when you help people it is helping yourself you're not helping someone when you help someone it is actually you are helping yourself in the beginning how you feel better if you are in depression suddenly you feel better that i have made this person happy today or this person is smiling because of me today i i am beneficial for this person or this person was in misery i made him come out of his or her misery so suddenly you will feel better and automatically the sense of depression that you are no more beneficial for anyone you will get rid of that sense and you will feel better so this is again a treatment which comes through faith helping people and giving them a better idea better idea how to help people and uh, so just coming towards end we talked about meditation given the doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists they regularly suggest if you are facing stressful life and depressions meditate do you know islam demands or islam has suggested five time prayers in a day so interestingly that's how i define prayers this is what every muslim does in the day because this whole day is always full of stresses and depressions so ever now and bit after a short period of time god asked okay let's leave everything out and meditate for a little while while praying and then 
talk to me. Third important thing which the doctors suggest, that is counseling. You go to psychiatrist for the counseling purposes. What I suggest, if you follow a faith, let's make your counsel, let's make God your counselor in your privacy, in your isolation, in bright, in dark, in the morning. Sit and try to share your sorrows, try to share your thoughts with your Lord, with your creator. Make your Lord your best friend with whom you can share your all the stresses and desires. And interestingly, if you believe in faith, so the faith believes that God has all the powers to change your life pattern, to help you out, come from, help you come out of your issues and problems. So when you go to a psychiatrist, they can only help you telling you the good things. But when you share your sorrows with your Lord, the so Lord has a power to change your life too. So let's make Lord your friend and counselor with whom you can counsel and talk about all these good things. And now quickly, then we'll go towards the question answers. I'm uh, listing down some of the more helpful activities uh, which could help people uh, religiously come out uh, of our depressions and stressful lifestyles. It's uh, the charity we have already discussed that this is very helpful. And uh, then the physical effort, the exercise, the science suggests exercise always suggests help you come out of the depressions. If you make, you make, you go, same thing you do with the hel helping people physically as well. Helping people out with your physically, investing time in someone. This will give you a good social circles as well. Maybe the old social circles, they are not helping you out much. They, are, they have not proven to be the right social support system for you. Maybe you go out to do charity, you will find new social circles. They will help you out in your society. You can go out and clean the streets, help feed the animals and uh, disabled people. You can help them. You go and see the sick people in hospitals, in old age homes. You go and visit those old people, help them out, take food for them. All these little small things, they can help you come out of the depression and stresses. Even in the traffic, if you are stuck. If somebody is looking for the way, you give them a way and you stop there instead of rushing into the traffic. Even that little thing can give you the right kind of uh, uh, support and uh, belief. And uh, be constructive in your criticism. If you think that my critical works can give someone depression, because even the guilt can give you a depression. You have uttered some wrong words. Someone has felt really bad about them. And then later on, you go back to your home and do you start thinking what I have done, what I have said. Even that will give you a stress in your life. So at first place, religion and Islam suggest always think before you speak. So that neither you get depression, neither you give become a reason to give a depression to anyone else through your words. So be sensible about it and lower your expectation with people. This is the baseline suggested by the religion to everyone. Baseline. Do not expect from people. Only keep on doing good for your endorphin. Only know this endorphin helps me. I need endorphin. Leave the expectation from people. Do not expect the return from anyone. You do good because it is good. This is needed to be done. You do it. Do not expect. When you expect something good from the people that I have done this much good, at least I expect this kind of a gesture from someone, always you will be in stress. So if you leave that part completely to the people and stop expecting from people, 50% of stresses will right away grow, go from your life. And uh, exercise is very important. Be sensible about spending your time with whom and where you spend time. Last but not least, Islam suggests that, and at the same time, medical science suggests as well. Do not make friends with someone who is already in depression. That does not mean that you leave them. Of course not. You do not leave them, but you do not make friends with them. Friends means 
you started believing what they say because they are going through a depressing depression so they might affect your thinking as well because they're depressed people they they are negative in their mindset if you start believing in them you'll become a negative in your mindset too so there was one patient now there are two patients so instead of making friends friends and stress do not tell them but be a support system for them but do not start believing in them and do not make friends in a manner that you get that negative thoughts and ideas with them and uh, always um, try to visit some fresh air nice places like lake district and such places like that in uk this is always helpful to get rid of uh, the stress levels and depressions and uh, always do some exercises whenever you feel angry and uh, try to achieve the balance in your life the work life family life spiritual life so give a decent balance to all these three aspects right from the beginning maybe you all are students now so right from the beginning learn to develop that balance this will keep you away throughout your life uh, no stresses of course there are issues issues will come but then you will learn to deal with them you do not fall into the trap of depressions and uh, stresses so these were some things the time constraint was there of course but then i tried to uh, uh, explain how the religion and faith can uh, educate us uh, towards managing our stressful life and depressions so i once again thank you for your patient listening and uh, of course the management for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak to you all so i i i finish my words here and uh, i'll open the session for the question answers thank you very much thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you sir uh, well we said we are going to continue the work with you very informative sessions and i strongly believe that if one of us here as a participant mm. we are going to benefit not only uh, managing our own mental health but else, uh, also supporting uh, families and children when we are working with them we are now moving to the second part of the session which is a question and answer and there's some discussion uh, which is going to be chaired by uh reverend uh dr peter rubinson dean of dabi i can you please get him and we share this thank you we are uh, running a bit late but can you that's what i'll try to act and then echo your uh praise for our guest speaker today and thank you so much for everything you've helped us with this afternoon and um, we're open for questions uh, can i encourage you to keep your questions brief uh so we can maximize the time that we can hear uh from uh professor kadri so who'd like to ask a question so it only has to be ah thank you very much Yeah, this is a good question, basically. So, when we talk about faith and religion, so it's a very comprehensive set of principles and ideas. It is not a single thing you take from the faith and then you leave the rest. So you adopt a lifestyle, and then there are so many other uh, traditions from Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet of Islam, which suggests. 
that if you will make yourself busy with people's work and if you make yourself busy with helping the poor segments of the society god will help you in your current life with your finances and other issues so this is another principle the way we believe that if we do act of charity we get rid of the depressions and stress similarly the other tradition suggests that god will create ways for you but how we can invite people towards it as i have mentioned it's through awareness education and uh, someone we all have to take a step out and forward to to do something we have to create a balance in our life by learning how to spend couple of in that area. Good, thank you very much for that question. Who would like to ask a question next? Yes, over here, thank you. Why, sure. Okay, yeah. It's. Uh, uh, I tell you one thing. It's. It's not about being a good Muslim or a bad Muslim. We have talked about various types of stresses. Everyone faces. Some people they are more sensitive in their personality. Some they are stronger. People have different genes, different backgrounds, different uh, upbringings. Some people they can handle the stresses. in a more strength, strengthful manner and some they don't people are all all sort different people so saying that i mean someone is good muslim or bad muslim that is not the right thing and we shouldn't be considering that but what we need to do is whatever for example if we have a faith in islam so the procedures and traditions islam is suggesting to help us out from the stressful life so we need to follow that and if somebody Uh, believes uh, in christianity or hinduism or judaism whatever the religion they follow or even no religion still if they believe in the act of charity and good deeds so one should act upon them that will automatically help but uh, nevertheless quran tells us a interesting thing there is a verse of quran which says uh, the part of the verse is la khawfun alaihim wa la hum yahzunun that the highest type of reward which god can give any living being any living human being the highest form of reward which a god can give to any living human being is la khawfun alaihim wa la hum yahzunun that god makes that person fear free and sorrow free that does not mean that now no such sad incident will take place in his life or her life or that does not mean that no fear will touch him or her no it is that god made their make their hearts so fearless and so sorrowless that they are indulged and engaged with god only and whatever happens they have a strong dependence on god that they have a trust in god that god will help us god will bring us out of all these kind of stresses so having a stronger faith means more practicing muslim but that having depressions does not suggest that someone is a bad muslim but having a fearless and sorrow free strong personality means you are a more practicing muslim thank you good thank you very much um i've received a question in writing Yeah. Um fear has an impact on stress. Please discuss. Yes, of course that fear is true. Fear and stress. Any any kind of fear that is uh, uh, among the list of the stresses. This is what I have just said uh, from the verse of Quran that uh, 
the best reward God can give to anyone in this life is God made them fearly, fear fearless. So they don't fear anyone. So which means no stress, no fear, no stress. Only there are two type of emotions in this world. Only two type of emotions. One is fear. Other one is sadness. Fear is for something. When you fear that we will lose something. When something will happen. Maybe someone is dearer, you will lose that person. You will lose the wealth. You will lose the property. You will lose your life partner. You will lose your child. You will lose your job. For losing something, this is a fear. And when something happens, whatever happens to you, that is sadness and sorrow. So this whole life is bracketed by two emotions, fear and sorrow. This is what God is suggesting in Quran, that the highest achievement one human being can do is get rid of your fears, which will help you get rid of your sorrows. The same phenomena lies in Buddhism as well. So they tell you low expectations, no hopes, no sorrows. Same thing Quran has suggests. Same thing many other expectations, less hopes, no fear, ultimately no sorrows. You people start learning that way. So fear is always one, of course, it's it's one of the stresses here. Yeah. Good. Do we have any more questions? May I ask a question? So just, just to add one, you see the a statement of Rumi in front of ah. you on the slide, a beautiful one. It says, narrowness is accompanied by openness. Whenever there is a stress, there must be a day after a night. Whenever the night falls, it is assured that the morning will rise. The sun will rise after the night that has to come. And be careful not to despair. From this death, there is a way to life. After every sorrow or after every difficulty, there is a life, a new opening, a new era. Yes, please. Good. Thank you very much. I think we're going to leave the last word to you uh, and to Rumi. So I'll ask my question uh, and as we finish. So it gives me great privilege and pleasure today to thank you so much for your wonderful lecture uh, this afternoon. I think you've been exemplary in the way that you've bridged the practical and the everyday world with the academic and also with the world of spirituality. Uh, you've presented very clearly and you've given us very persuasive insights. I'm going away with questions about forgiveness, a real stress on the forgiveness of God, and also on occasion we heard the economist come through and that real interest in how it works on the ground in human behavior. And I was fascinated that um, within the United States, the depressive drug bill was so huge. Yeah. So surely if we can get more people in our communities and in society to volunteer, uh, then that should reduce the drug bill and help our economy. Yes, that, that's, that's how the faith community can contribute Absolutely. and help the governments. Yes. Yes, and lastly, I want to say we were all, and I'm sure I speak for everybody in this room, hugely relieved that Helpers High can take the place of Runners High. <laughs> I had visions yeah. of us all going home, putting our tracksuits on and running around the streets of Derby. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a very uh, uh, welcome uh, relief. Uh, just, uh, just, just, just one more last thing before the world the, on the forgiveness, because you said that you raised that point, the forgiveness of the God. Yes, that is one of the stresses that when you are feeling guilty about something, so that gives you a stress, and that's why in the religion Islam, the concept of tawbah, uh, seeking forgiveness from God, tawbah, that has been introduced. When you sit in front of God and you seek tawbah in front of it. So that naturally gives you a relief in your personality and you get rid of that stress. And I thank you very much once again for chairing uh, the session and uh, 
managing the question answer session in such a beautiful manner and it was really lovely and enlightening meeting you and uh, i'm sure this won't be the last meeting that will continue Indeed. certainly for that so and we I give, thank you everyone shall we give professor cadre a huge round of applause Thank you to you all for coming along and thank you for your questions. Thank you. Good. Well, thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure to be here.